might be on the bright side, but um, right now, get my gloves up. Um, I'm gonna run outside to my garage, try to see if I could do a quick start of my snow blower that I bought as a um, fixer upper. Um, and the reason why I'm kind of trying to see if I could do it now instead of, you know, going through the process that I wanted to do, which was replace the electric starter, replace the carburetor and, you know, uh, drain and refill the oil and then throw in some fresh gas. But, you know, in a couple of hours, it's about to snow. If I can get this snow blower to work. That would be perfect because um, they're calling for three to, I want to say three to seven inches of snow. Um, it's supposed to snow for roughly four hours. Then it's supposed to rain. Also, I have a smaller snow blower that I've been using. To, both of them are MTDs, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the smaller one, it needs <laughs> a serious carburetor overhaul. Um, so, you know, that's on another project. Um, it's going to be dark, so we may not be able to capture the video, and I may not be able to fully document it, but at least I'll kind of do a quick of, all right, this is it. Um, let's see if it will start, you know, that type of ordeal. So we'll see what happens, guys. All right, so this is the big boy, the 5 by uh, 22 MTD that I was referring to. So one thing for sure, I need to learn how to get that tire to reinflate and stay on the beam of the rim. And this is the little booger three by 21. This is my old trusty little guy. I tell you, this little thing right here, she's old, she's rusty, but uh, she still pulls a weight, believe it or not. She still pulls her weight. So, if I'm not mistaken, I did run this one dry uh, for the most part. I did, and then I did put in some, you know, stuff to kind of preserve it, keep this thing, you know, weather prepared. Uh, I do recall that there were times in spring and summer that I would start my snowblower and then I'll push it back in. It's quite possible that we'll get this bad boy to start and when we do, <laughs> of course that carburetor is gonna be like <laughs> Other things that I've experienced is issues with the primer, uh, of which this primer is actually broken during the summer something happened something happened that the primer came off so i was only able to pull a hose up and i was going to replace the primer um switch so seeing that that's telling me we're not going to be able to start this because majority of the time actually all of the time i need to uh you know pump the primer and then you know use the choke uh to get her to start so hmm it's not looking good, guys. It's not looking good. But, you know, we'll we'll try to do something in its current condition. All right, guys, update. Added some gas, fresh gas. We already have some oil from previous owner. Spark plug is still the original. Um, got our, if I'm not mistaken, 
So we have our choke on, that should be the choke. And that should be the choke position. Uh, we have our throttle about half. We don't wanna go too far um, because it's a cold engine, you know, um, we wanna break it in. So I'm gonna kinda of load it a little bit. Um, we got our key in. I think this key actually turns. No, I don't think the key actually turns. I think it's either in or out. Yeah, it's a plastic key, so likely it doesn't turn. So um, I actually connected a um, cable to here and it wanted to start up. However, I quickly pulled it because the thing is, is that you're supposed to connect the cable and then push to start. So I believe the reason why when I connected the cable here is because it's an extension cable and you're not supposed to connect the extension cable because it can kill your electric starter. So that may have been some sort of, you know, intermittent issue. So I disconnected it um, and that's this. That's that extension cable there. So what I'm going to do is if we get some, you know, if we're able to at least get the motor to turn over, I'm going to look at purchasing a uh, cable that is designed for this machine. So again, this is the 5x22 two stage lecture start yeah, machine. So. Let's go ahead and get our hands warmed up so we can start pulling. All right, so let's go ahead and pull. Ah, I like that. I like that. So, I was advised to let it run like that since it's a very cold starting. And we haven't been, well, I, I, I can't exactly say when was the last time that this motor actually ran. So we don't wanna increase the RPMs on this engine. We want to basically break it in, allow it to warm up, break in the fluids, the gasoline, lubricate the cylinder, stuff of that nature. Take the choke off. I see a spark there. doesn't appear that I can up the spark. So I'm not too sure what that spark was all about. It doesn't appear that I can up the spark. Hmm. We were getting sparks up the exhaust. So we're trying to figure out where the heck did those sparks come from. Are we leaking anything? Over. We got a flat tire, so it's gonna be hard to actually do this. I don't think that was there before. So we could have a oil leak. But what really concerns me is the fact that it was sparking. And even when we had it at a lower position, the turtle, it was still too high. So, hmm.
is there such a thing as a runaway throttle on a snowblower? You know, that's a good question, guys. Very good question. Pretty sure you guys are more informative about this bad boy than I am. But um, that's far. I mean, you know, the fact that we were able to get it to turn over was a was a was a good sign. It was an absolute good sign because uh, this little thing right here only cost me about forty bucks. Forty bucks. Um, so seems like we got a good motor. We just need some overhauling done. Right there. Is it fluid that came out of there? Don't know. Checking for gas leaks. Smell gas, don't see gas. So, again, spark and gas doesn't mix so much on a spark start a fire. So, of, and of course it's dark so I can't really see what's going on so let's see if we can figure out something um, I don't have the primer so I can't really do much to this thing but you know let's see really do not have a primer so I do not want to add more gas um, sometimes I pull the string up slowly to just lubricate the system yep hmm all right looks like we're gonna be getting this snow shovels out um, but the good thing is this thing starts. That's the positive thing. Bad thing is, it's sparking out of the exhaust. So, I need to uh, do some research to figure out why on, the, on earth is it doing that. Yeah, I don't know, guys. It was just first I seen sparks from this area then this area like it got out to here so that kind of made me like uh, hold up <laughs> hold up what you doing there uh, and I am smelling gas so more than likely what I need to do is take this bad boy right here off and identify if we have some sort of leak. Yeah, because if I'm not mistaken, carburetor should be right here and here. And this right here could be a representation of a gas leak. But, um, you know, this thing is so old, we can buy parts for cheap online and uh, swap it out ourselves. You know, it's just learning experiences. Uh, eventually, I'll uh, get it right and get her done. But um, I would start it up again, but 99% of the time is where you see some sort of trace of leak you smell some gas and you see spark kill it <laughs> that's just that's just a rule of thumb just kill it um so that's exactly what we're gonna do got that on the off position we're gonna pull this key it's gonna put this bad boy back in the garage and you know just consider today as a good day because uh Honestly, we were able to get this thing to start in its current condition. Um, chokes off, things is on stop, uh, key is removed, so she's not gonna engage. Uh, it does have a a fuel cutoff switch here. So let's 
so we'll engage that too but other than that um key takeaway things is figure out how to get that tire to reinflate and take this whole portion off to see exactly if indeed the carburetor is there identify a source of leak and go from there and hopefully um you know we'll work something out um and also potentially the sparks that we could be seeing is probably probably from a foul spark plug you know it could be because of that too my two babies here they're taking a uh, day off tomorrow <laughs> oh my goodness all right guys it's kind of hard for me for you guys to hear me but this is the next day as you can see we've got a lot of snow out here um i got the lawnmower running no sparks are coming from the engine well from the muffler however i believe the sparks are from bad spark plug and bad uh carburetor and the reason why i say that is because when i have this snowblower you know have it turned down a little bit as uh, far as the uh, idle uh, i'm getting a surgeon so the surgeon is telling me that it's not getting proper fuel uh so you know of course this is a this is an old old snowblower got for 40 dollars so more than likely it's the original uh carburetor and it's quite possible that it has never been cleaned or replaced so uh, another thing to tell me that it's getting uh, not enough fuel is when I actually engage for the snow to pick up it uh, it just kills the engine so watch this see that hesitation and now you got the surgeon right there so that 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 you heard that backfire and that's surging going on so that's telling us that our engine's not getting enough fuel so well on that note we're gonna uh refer back to uh the main process which is the snow shovel i don't have much to clean up honestly um so i'm just trying to get it somewhat clean so i can move this car back all right guys uh let me get going because my phone is not waterproof so i'll talk to you guys later Peace.